Welcome back to Breakfast with Bob. My name is Bob Babbitt. We are here at the ITU World Triathlon Championships, and we're brought to you by Epson, and you can check us out on triathlete.com. We are also very excited. Triathlon is in the Paralympics for the first time next year. Paratriathlon is the name of the sport. We have a paratriathlon race tomorrow morning. Yep. Melissa Stockwell from Dare to Try, yes. and one of our favorite people, 2004 in the military, was it an IED? How did you lose your leg? Yep, yep. Um, an IED is a routine convoy through Central Baghdad, and a um, vehicle was struck by IED and took Lost my leg, leg, but left me with my life. So, leg above the knee, and how tough was that for and for all for all soldiers? Yeah. When you're, you're 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 young, you're vibrant, and your whole life is being physical. Your physicality is everything, and all of a sudden, you can feel maimed. Yeah, I mean, I'd gone 24 years of my life miss with both my legs, suddenly I'm missing one. You know, it's definitely a recovery process. Um, you know, I was at, did a lot of my recovery at Walter Reed. Yeah. So I was surrounded by a lot of other soldiers missing much more than I was. Right. So it was very easy to look at myself and think about how lucky I was. Instead of thinking about how horrible my life was going to be, I thought, holy cow, I have three good limbs, my mind, my eyesight. So it really that was helped. important. To, oh, it's huge. Yeah. I mean, that to have be surrounded by other soldiers, I mean, regardless of, the severity of their injuries, but it's the motivation you push each other. I mean, you're all, the camaraderie is stronger than ever at, right. at a hospital trying to rehab. So, you know, I kind of always considered myself one of the lucky ones. So the transition from being a vibrant, athletic soldier, and then how did you find? Was it triathlon or running? What What did you find first? Swimming. 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 Oh, yep, that's right. Yep. Yep. So I did. Um, I did some of my rehab at Walter Reed in the pool. Yes. Um, I learned to love the water. I didn't have to wear a prosthetic. It kind of yes. made me feel whole again. And um, turned out I was a decent swimmer, and I ended up um, swimming in the 2008 Paralympic Games in Beijing about four years after I lost my leg. Four years after you lose your leg, mm -hmm. you're in the Paralympics, yes. and you were flag bearer. I was flag bearer, yes. How cool was that? Oh, that, that was amazing. Such a moment. Yes. yes. Yeah. Just, I mean, we're talking about people who've been Paralympic athletes for a long time, and sure. you, were, you were a brand new Paralympic athlete. Yeah. That's yeah. a hell of an honor. Yes, it was very much an honor. So, from swimming... When did you hear about this ridiculous this crazy sport, sport triathlon? triathlon? Um, actually, in um, thanks to the Challenge Athletes Foundation uh -huh. and their Operation Rebound program, mm, I was invited yep. in 2009 to do my very first triathlon at SDTC, and um, I thought it was crazy because why would you want to swim, bike, and run all in one day? But I went out there to San Diego, um, gave it a shot, and I crossed that finish line, and I was, I mean, I was hooked from the start. I loved the challenge of all three sports, being on the same course as able-bodied athletes, and yes. I mean, it was. Um, it was, it was life changing, and I became very passionate about it. And there's something about when you start stepping up in distance, where you're going, okay, I, I I'm liking this. I'm liking the more challenge, more right. distance, more challenge. Definitely. And you ended up doing Ironman Arizona. I did in 2013. Yep. So a proud Ironman finisher. Yep. And, and that experience was. Uh, you know, it's different than the sprint distance, where you know here you want to race to win. I mean, right. Ironman you want to race to finish, and it just. Catered you know, workout. Yeah, a whole different <laughs> mindset. Like in the morning, just kind of taking it all in. And, you know, you start before the sun comes up, you finish when it goes down. And, you know, the last couple of miles, obviously the most challenging, right. but seeing that finishing shoot and being able to find my feet again and just a roar of the crowd and the, I had the American flag. And it was, it was amazing. <laughs> so talk about the creation of Dare to Try. This is your hometown of Chicago. Yes, we're yep. raising it. One, that must be so exciting. It's amazing. For you. Yep. Yep. It's, um, you know, it's my backyard. Tomorrow when we race, I get to swim in the lake. I swim in every week. I get to bike and run and see my my city, the skyline as I go. It's um, had the local family and friends yeah. that can come out. Um, and yeah, the hometown of Dare to Try. So Dare to Try, I co-founded with two friends back in 2011 uh -huh. um, with a, you know, the mission to get athletes with physical disabilities into the sport of triathlon. Okay. And we've really grown from, you know, what we thought would be, you know, 10 athletes the first year doing a triathlon to over 150 athletes. Um, we have grassroots wow. level. We have youth, adults, injured service members. We have an elite team that a lot of us are trying to, you know, on the road to Rio next right. year. So um, it's really been amazing. And we are a sponsor of the ITU World Championship. So, you know, are, we're able to see our logo everywhere, so it's just pretty cool. So, Para Try is a year away. Yes. Now, uh, what are your thoughts in terms of what's the possibilities of yeah. Melissa Stockwell <laughs> being the sideline there? And, um, and you're also a mom. I am a mom. So, I took last year off. I um, had my son last November, so I have a nine his and name? a half. His name is Dallas Patrick. Dallas, I yes. like it. Yes. So, I have a nine month old son at home, and the whole 
the whole goal, if I could have chosen it, was to have a baby net last year, then to get back into things this year and hope of going to Rio. Right. So my times have steadily gotten better. Coming back from, you know, the big belly yes. and having a baby is not the easiest thing to do. Your body changes, your priorities, everything kind of changes. Your balance changes. The, everything changes. But So it hasn't been the easiest road back, but, you know, if I, my very first mile back was a 16 minute mile, one mile, 16 minutes, which you know, I almost gave up at that point, but I went home, I saw my son, and I thought, you know what, I had this dream, and you have to make that decision every yeah. day just to go and try again the next day. So I've seen my times improve, and they've come down, and right now I'm faster than I've ever been. Um, really? I, I, have, I am, which is which is pretty exciting. I have, We have a competitive field. Um, tomorrow it's going to be a good race. Um, you know, people in my class continue to get faster. It's competitive. So, you know, my fastest times, um, you know, there are fast fast just as fast times or faster out there so i'm excited for tomorrow i mean tomorrow will not qualify me for rio it's not a qualification okay. race but it's we we need to points. get as high as we can the points the crucial points that we need to you know get these world ranking spots and to hopefully make the team so i'm sure you hear it from from a lot of folks because there's there's always another uh, another soldier who's been injured sure. another person yeah. who's dealing with whatever yeah. how often are you involved with that? I'm, I'm guessing it's pretty much all the time. Yeah, so, you know, the wounded sold, you know, being a wounded veteran, like the, the, the community is small in the first place, and then you take the females, and it's an even much smaller oh, group. Oh, good point. So anytime that there is a wounded female that comes to Walter Reed or to San Antonio, typically I am aware of it, right. um, and I try to reach out to their family or to them, and whenever the time is right, I mean, for some people it's the next day, for others it's months later when they're ready to talk to somebody. Yes. Um, obviously, always, always open to talk with their family, with them, try to, you know, know tell them that, that things will go on life will go on and kind of hopefully spread the awareness of all the opportunities that are available to them Love so that. I mean I was inspired by many ahead of me and I hope that I can kind of lead someone to the path of you know whatever they want to do in life Love it, Melissa. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you very much. Enjoy. You'll be smiling the whole time. I'm going to be smiling. Right it's a good race. Your lakefront. Yes. And what yes. 6,500 people came to your party here? Um, so yeah, I don't even know. A lot. Yeah. I'm not 6, sure how many. 6,500. That's racing. a lot of people in that our town. That's a lot of people. Yeah. Melissa Stockwell has been our guest, the founder of Dare to Try. Again, we are brought to you by Epson, and we're airing on triathlete.com. My name is Bob Babbitt. This is with Breakfast with Bob. Hold on, everyone. We will be right back. Thank you.